This is the examination of the hidden human condition. You're listening to the Hidden Killers Podcast. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi. We are talking with forensic psychologist Kate Walinga right now, going back in time all the way back to 1996 and the murder of Tupac Shakur. Uh, remember all of the conspiracy theories and watching this progress and then it sat there dead for quite some time. Uh, seemingly uh, a lot of the reason for it not progressing was the culture of no snitching. Uh, and it, it's understandable if you really look at it from the outside in, if you're not part of a, a culture where that is is very common, you may wonder why not? But it, it makes sense if you look at it in the thought process behind it, the many years of mistrust in law enforcement for good reason in a lot of marginalized communities. That seems to be probably one of the bigger reasons why this case has not been solved. People seem to know, but they don't necessarily talk in any sort of official capacity. Uh, let's talk about that for a little bit. What are your thoughts on that sort of culture? And is this, was that an appropriate way to be handling this sort of thing where the community almost dealt with it on their own versus law enforcement being able to get the information they needed? If you're a person of color, why on earth would you trust the police? Sure. Like, why would you, like, yeah. that's oh, yeah. just, the, the, let's forget, like, there have been talk of gang culture and cu culture of silence and all mm -hmm. of that. Like, the police worked really hard to create a, a vibe in which you cannot safely go to the cops. Sure. And you're as likely to be arrested for having information or for lying to the police or why do you know so much? Maybe you did it. Yeah. That kind of thing. And there's a certain attitude of, look, there's no words I can say that are going to bring him back, but there's words I can say that are going to get me killed. Yeah. That's, that, that is, that's very true. Well, over the years, we've, I think we all we know who killed Tupac, quite honestly, at this point in time, that being Orlando Anderson. And, and that being said, even though there is the no snitching culture, if you look at several of the interviews that have been done with in, individuals who claim to have actually been in the car when it took place, they say, I'm not the one who did it. The only one who hasn't said they haven't did it is dead. And they were in the seat where the gunman was. And that is Orlando Anderson. Speaking up now and insinuating these things, it's led to one of those individuals who goes by the name Keith E.D. to have their house raided uh, just in the last week uh, for a murder that occurred nearly 30 years ago. What do you think they're going to be finding or looking for someone who likely wasn't the gunman but may have information? But again someone goes through your house looking for something from 30 years ago, especially a crime, are they likely to find much here? What they're, they may not be looking for anything. That There are purposes for raids and search warrants that on paper, they're looking for a certain, certain mm -hmm. item, whatever. But the reality is we all know about it now, don't we? Yeah, it's become public knowledge, and that puts some serious pressure on a lot of people to speak up, not just he whose house was raided, but anybody related to the case. Now you're at a fairly high risk for being outed or being pulled in a public way. And so maybe now is your time to go talk to the police before your name ends up in the headlines. This is I took this as a threat okay, and as a punitive public action by the police. There's no reason the rest of us should know that a raid happened and that a search warrant was executed. There's, we are not informed every time a search warrant is enacted. Sure. And so the fact that happened here, that feels punitive and threatening to me. And the message may not just be toward the homeowner. The message may be to anybody. Why not? Oh, I guess would be the question. We're talking an unsolved case for so long. There really hasn't, at least to our knowledge, there hasn't been anything that suddenly would have re-sparked this. A lot of the information has been out there lingering for literally decades. 
What do you think there was some sort of new piece of information that came across that let's go do this raid as an example or to to put that warning shot out there? Or is this, hey, we really need to try and wrap this case up. It's been quite some time. It's election season. Politics plays a huge role. I don't know when the current DA took office, and I don't know when the next DA election is, but that plays a huge role on police activity, where they'll go to the DA and say, here's our pile of evidence. And one DA will say, that's not enough. I don't want to enact, I don't want to follow anything. I don't want to enact a search warrant until you have, bring me more, give me more, give me more evidence. I need more than this. And then suddenly it becomes election season and there's concern about let's get a high publicity case. Sure. Let's get it in the news. Let's get some attention going to prove that I'm tough on crime. And suddenly actions are followed with the same evidence that was brought however many days, weeks or months ago, mm-hmm. decades. Yeah. But now suddenly it, I mean, it's in the headlines. It's getting attention. This political climate creates this soothing, well, look, we're tough on crime. Sure. Kind of attitude. To me, it feels there's a lot of politics in play as mm-hmm. well as un- unspoken threats and that kind of thing. And I- I'm of the opinion that this all could have been done decades ago, but it wasn't politically advantageous. This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi. 